So Stuart O'Grady came out today and said, I used a bit of gear. I dabbled a bit of hot sauce back in 98, 15 years ago. And uh, my name got on the French Senate inquiry, so I'm coming clean. Which, you know, basically what <laughs> I'm reading comments in the forums, people say, I'm, I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed that Stewie, our hometown hero, was, was using the gear. I'm disappointed, Harley. And I'm like, well, you know, I think Stuart's a good guy. I've had a few races, been the same uh, races as him, and uh, done a few rides and that. Pretty cool guy, pretty approachable. But I was never under any illusion that it was all natty. <laughs> because it's a choice, man. It's a business choice. It's a career choice. There's no way you're going to have a, an amazing career as a professional athlete in a mainstream sport earning big dollars without some sort of assistance. It's just not how, it's not how the world works. The world works where if you don't have enough money, you live on the fucking street. If you don't have enough money in some countries, you fucking die. So no wonder athletes are going, hang on, my job is to ride a bike up a hill as fast as I can or to win the bunch sprint or whatever. And I can use EPO, I can use testosterone, I can use insulin, I can use human growth factor, I can use shit loads of stimulant, modafinil, provigil, things like that, testosterone, blah, blah, blah. Do my job better and do my job. Do my job so I'll get paid. Yes, I'm going to do fucking drugs. And that's just how it is. New power meter just came in. Another one. The stages, the stages review will be up very soon. I've been pretty slack. I'm sorry about that. But I hopefully in the next couple of days. Next couple of days. So this one's a SRAM one. That's the SRAM bikes. So I digress, but you know, so I don't, I don't feel let down at all. I've been saying this for years that you can't be a big name pro in any sport with money. And, and be doing it 100% on a fucking gluten-free pasta and water. You know? It's not how it works, man. It's not how it works. Cycling industry wants to sponsor champions. They don't want fucking punters. <laughs> they want to sell product, you know? They want to sell product. We want champions in this world. We don't want fucking punters, man. So you can, if you're a junior cyclist and you get your ranks up there and you, you make it, get your first contract or whatever, and you're doing it pretty natty, you know, it's legal stuff. And then you, you go over there and you're like, fuck, <laughs> I'm getting my ass kicked. What's the deal? And the coach is like, whoa, this is the fucking deal, mate. You know what I mean? This is the fucking deal. You can keep up. You got a job. You can't keep up. You're fucked. Your contract will get some other one, someone else to do it. That's just any job. It's not cycling, the same in boxing. If you can't have the stamina to go all the rounds, boxers are using EPO. Swimmers are using EPO and blood doping, testosterone, and human growth hormone. You think Phelps did all that on fucking bongs, Pizza Hut, and Evian? <laughs> so, you know, you've got to ask questions. You've got to ask questions. Don't be disillusioned, people. Don't be disillusioned. Here's a... We could just send the Tour de France, right? There's, I'm just reading on cyclingnews.com. There's this, uh, the Tinkov, that, uh, that that banker guy, the Russian billionaire, sponsors the cycling team, right? Oleg Tinkov. And on Twitter, he recently said, uh, uh, what did he say? He said, he criticized Conador. He says, Conta's performance wasn't good. He needed to change many things in his preparation and be more pro. Will he do that? That's the question. His salary doesn't match his performance. Too rich and isn't hungry. That's my opinion. I deserve it. He must work harder. So this is a a billionaire, millionaire Russian who sponsors a, one of the top cycling teams, the Saxo Tinkoff, and he's basically critiquing their star rider Contador, who's already had doping suspensions, and saying, Contador, you're not riding hard enough. You're not professional enough. You're going to work harder. <laughs> basically, he's saying, Oi, get on some fucking good gear. Get on the gear sh and all everyone else is on. And fucking get up there again, mate. That's what he's saying. Sponsors want fucking thoroughbred racehorses. They don't want donkeys. <laughs> like, doping in sport requires gullibility on behalf of the audience. All the sponsors and shit, most of them know what's going on. Anyone with fucking half an IQ knows what's going on. Anyone with an idea of human physiology knows what's going on. But if you want to keep your job, you shut the fuck up. Basically, what all these teams have done in cycling... We don't worry about other sports, do we? Basketball, UFC, swimming, that's all just, no one do dopes in them, do, do they? You know, it's just cyclists. <laughs> that's another video anyway. 
we say we say all right you, you guys you want to look in our team you got to sign a thing if you have you had doping if you have doped in the past you're off the fucking team or we suspend you for six months and cut three months pay now what's this, what's the truth have you or haven't you there's the door if you have if you lie you can stay here and lose no money <laughs> but if you tell the truth we kick you out or we find you or both what are you gonna do what the message does that send to people it sends the message of lie continue the omerta and everything's good speak up you're fucked recently they kicked O'Grady off the Australian Olympic committee thing, little team thing they're basically saying and John Coates mate what a fucking hypocrite you know what I mean <laughs> I'll tell you some stories but try and keep this video on, on topic so am I disappointed about the truth about O'Grady I knew it all along never disappointed because I understand what it takes to be a champion athlete in a big name sport I understand so I can empathize I don't think these people who take drugs are bad people because it's you're taking a drug to do your job better like everyone else does people take Sudafed at work so they can perk up on the computer they take modafinil so they're not falling asleep when they're giving a seminar or a uni professor or whatever they're taking Viagra if they're a porn star or whatever people take fucking coffee 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 and then they're on the keyboards going I'm really disappointed that Stuart Agree was doing drugs <laughs> <laughs> you're doing drugs to critique someone who's doing drugs <laughs> like what the fuck it's the drug world we live in I don't even drink coffee myself okay I gave up a lot of drugs back in the 90s and stuff I'm not saying I'm better than anyone else I'm just saying that it's a drug culture out there so don't be surprised if your, your heroes are, are, are druggies because everyone else is pretty much anyone at a big name pro sport basketball baseball cricket anything anything where there's money to be made big bucks people are going to take shortcuts because if you don't take it someone else will someone who's equally as talented or just as good is going to do it you tell, you're trying to tell me Michael Jordan didn't dabble in anything you're trying to tell me that <laughs> you're trying to tell me there's only Barry Bonds Mark McGuire in baseball <laughs> only a couple of low people in the NFL and all that fuck off man don't be disappointed. Don't be disillusioned. Understand that's where we live in. It's cutthroat. If you don't dope, you won't cope.